Zero drop frames so far. Oh boy, I hope you didn't hear my throat do that sound. Let's go to YouTube and see where I left off. Oh, new Echo video. I'm gonna have to watch that. Let's see here. Live content. 54 minutes. Oh, I'm on full screen. But in gear in. Yeah, I was mid putting in the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 these things. I wait, ate some chocolate. I rebooted my router, had some tea. I should have rebooted my router in the first place, but I already see we have 2% drop frames. So maybe it doesn't make a difference. Maybe today is just a cursed day for internet. Anyways, the tweezers seem to be an excellent way to put on these eyelets because I'm able to just slide the tweezers straight through and plug it in and then just kind of wiggle the tweezers out. All right, so my plan is to put the wheels in and then put oil. <clears throat> Let's grab one of these right off the bat here. Ow. put this through and then put some oil on there and then push it in the rest of the way so there and there but first let's get the tire on a bit Rotate. You see this? more in there it's not all the way in I don't think but it's in enough so we can apply grease and all that stuff Alright. So we'll set this aside. We'll get out our our oil pin and we will insert these. We also can put oil on the the gear system soon. Ah, it came out. We can hold our finger there and put the gears in. All right, so first up, out a bit. So I guess it just, oh yeah, it does. We'll just do oil here. And the oil here. And then shove it in. here and oil 
here. And shove it together. And then that gets oil in the eyelets. Alright. And now... This has to open up more. I should have done one axle at a time. I don't want to pull the axle out and get... Ah! Finally! Oh, and we got the drive shaft all, uh, all a crazy. Alright. So now, this will put the tires on. Not bend everything. And we can just be careful and make sure we don't do it too tight. I just pulled that way out. There's a gap, but not too much gap. There we go. Bill, let's just put this one in. Let's just remove the drive shaft. <laughs> it's only in the way. to be gentle I don't, I don't I don't wish I don't wish to force it and bend the axle I wish this was a little wider but it's less for the initial start and more for getting it tuned in there we go and now squish a little more a little more there we go we're done we're done with this tool that I bought for only one purpose. Look at that. Now we'll stick the, the, I guess it's called propeller shaft. Look at that. Oh, it moves smooth already. And now we add the oil. This is a big one. This gear is too big. The nice thing when this is empty, 
because it's a brush tip. I can just use it as a brush later on. And then just brush on. Oh, it runs so smooth now. Wow. That's cool. Okay, we're gonna set this aside. I don't know where to set this aside. <laughs> See, this is an issue I'm gonna have when it comes to Gumbla. Gumbla has a lot of parts. A lot of, lot of these things. See, with the, 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 the small model I built and this, it's more doable. Okay, let's fold this up. Because we're at the bottom now. This is the terminal assembly. So we need A6, which is this part here. So the internet dying was weird. I noticed it was in the red and it went to zero kilobits. And it kept bouncing between zero and a thousand kilobits. And then it just ended the stream. That was sad. Okay, so this is something I've always had struggles with. Building electrical connections in plastic model kits. I couldn't do it on my perfect grade Gundam. Uh, I couldn't do it in my Enterprise model. But I'm hoping a lot of years, Tanya has done some cool stuff. Oh, look at that. That just slides right into there. Oh, it does snap in. Look at that. Doesn't doesn't come out. Oh man! And then those are the two terminals inside that the motor contacts. Oh, and the motor snaps in too. I I wasn't supposed to do that yet. I don't think. But we did. Yeah, we weren't supposed to do that yet. But that is fine. Because, see, these motors are designed to come out. Also, you can get uh, gold-plated terminal sets. Okay, so we need this for this. It says push straight down. That's really hard to push. Can we use this thing? <laughs> no, it doesn't go far enough. My cat is in an exploration mode. He's like, I must... It says just push down. I'm guessing until it's level. And it's level, so there we go. We're done. And then we snap it in. And then this assembly... snaps into this this way it does wow that's crazy man
Oh, this thing. And this thing. And screws. So we'll finally get to use the Tamiya screwdriver. Now we need this part. Da, da. Could you imagine if I lost the stream and it ended the stream? And I didn't know and I just kept building. Happily building and I looked up and it says stream ended. And I looked and it was when I was putting in the uh, things. That'd be sad, it'd be heartbroken. But that's why I keep an eye on the stream. I guess you can set up an, audi an audible alert so it makes a sound. Maybe I should do that. So it wants oil on this. So let's do that. Eh. And then it goes in the back like this. And then it goes in the back of the car, the opening this way, sitting here. Oh, and, the, and then that interfaces with the everything. As we're going to cover this, I suppose I should oil this now. We'll just have to put some oil on this. And then oil on a fairly large part of this, but not all of it. It'll work its way around. It's not the best job, but it's better than nothing. And then this assembly snaps down. It certainly does. And then a screw. Is this magnetic? It is! Oh, that's... That is... That is amazing. Two millimeter by five millimeter screw. Shall we find out? <laughs> One point nine three millimeter. By almost six millimeter, but I'm guessing the head is not included. And the head is a little over a millimeter. So yeah. It looks like it is indeed a two by five millimeter screw. We have confirmed with science that this is the correct tool for the job. Science. So, a uh, fun thing about the screwdriver, it's got like spinny top, so you can just rest it in your palm and spin. Oh, so snug. Now we'll just roll. Now there's some resistance because of the, uh, we're spinning the motor. Also, this still pops out. But that will be solved soon because we're now putting in this piece. So it has to go in like this. Uh, 
And then we need this, which is the switch. It's a very simple system for the switch. Also, these rollers are very tiny. But we have numerous rollers to choose from when we make our decision. And then this goes in second, oddly. I would have thought this went in first. But no, it goes in second. There we go. And then... When I rotate it, it pushes it down in contact with the battery. It's a very simple design. And now we attach the Super 2 chassis top logo part, the part that says Super 2 chassis. I'm going to cut this out and we'll take a good peek at it. Because it is so dang cool. Also, I see our screwdriver is getting into trouble, into mischief. Boy, you sure can't read that. Even... It's too much glare. There, now it won't come out. Oh, look at that. This. Well, they don't spin freely now because they got the motor. But you can just twist one wheel and they all move. It's a bit of play. Oh man, that is some cool stuff. We can actually stick batteries in it now and it'll go zoom. Should we do that? I can't wait. Let's do it. Let's stick some batteries in it. Oh, right now it's talking about the rear the rear stay which we are using i believe so yeah we're done this although i think that is for holding the motor on so maybe we should cut out this part first and install that And then we'll put in some batteries. Well, it sits in there pretty loose. I don't know how much difference that makes, but it's in. So plus on this side. And plus on this side. Oh, minus over here. We got our Duracells. Turn her on. Oh! Oh! It goes zoom. Oh, and these are battery holder downers. We have to pull up this part too. We need these. All right, so this part actually is different. Oh, this is what the double-sided sticky tape is. It's to stick our cat friend to the battery clip. That is what this is for. What did I drop? Oh, my tweezers. I might need those. I successfully muted before sneeze. 
Okay, I got my tweezers. Let's cut off some of the excess. Uh, Double-sided sticky tape with the absolute wrong tool for the job. But it worked. Sticking all the garbage in the box, but we're gonna keep the box. Bum, bum, bum. Because we're done the car when it comes to the instructions. Effectively. Because now it's time for the tune up parts. What will make the car unique? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll stick it on when the, I'm gonna put the canopy on because there's enough room to stick the cat through with the canopy attached. So this is our, our bolt down. So this attaches into here. And then back here, that locks together. Oh, would you look at that car? So our cat friend, I'm going to be able to position perfectly. Perfect. We see him. Oh, look at that cat racer. Meow. All right, perfect. It, it's, it is effectively done. It, it will now drive. Uh, we need rollers in the front, and this is the back bumper. I think we used the back bumper, but I've been thinking. The tunic parts, I wasn't gonna use the back bumper, but I could use the back bumper and still mount this to it. So we're gonna explore our tune-up parts now. So we have, what size middle? Is, so this is this is one of the things I got this for. I don't, I'm not familiar with all the roller sizes. I think these are 13 millimeter. Yeah, these are 13 millimeter rollers, okay. So I'm gonna put this here. We never use this part. Haha. <laughs> uh. <laughs> la 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 la. Enough with these instructions. Uh, I don't want to put them somewhere where I can't actually reach them. I might still need them. <clears throat> Alright. How's it fit in the box? Look at all that room. So even though I'm using, I, I'm not worried about the size of the car because I'm using official Tamiya parts. That said, you know, this is important. If you put the rollers in the wrong holes, you can't end up being too big. So using official parts doesn't protect you from incompetence on your part. Which is the truest irony in life. All right, let's take a peek at these instructions. And then we also need the sliding damper instructions. Oh, and this has a dampers. 
which we may not use. We could use these dampers on something else. Or we could use them on this car. Or maybe we won't use them on this car. Kind of like, keep it simple. So these are, these are 19 millimeter rollers. Okay, so these are full size rollers. Interesting. Okay. And these are the little things for uh, rotation freedom. These are our FRP plates. So the front one goes over top, of course, and the rear one. So this is set up for a big split. And it looks like it uses, no, it doesn't for super XX chassis. It looks like we don't need the rear bumper. That's if we decide to use the back plate. Let's see what the sliding damper says though. Because the sliding damper might actually prefer to be on. This, oh, aluminum, Al, Allen, aluminium, Mr. Allen, aluminium here. You can get carbon fiber versions of this, which is so cool. So these have big, weird shaped rollers, kind of like cups. And I was thinking about putting these in the front. And then double stacking the 19s on the back. But this might come with. Yeah, because it comes with 13 and 19s. And this is also 19. But I could put 13s in the front. We're not sure. Alright, so two springs, soft and heavy. Let's keep our screws separate. Nineteen thirteen, nineteen seventeen. It doesn't say if it has a preference, but it does scoop towards the car, so it's got to sit facing towards the car. So we have the chance to save these plates, or this one plate, for a future build, or use it on the cat. This will sit up front. This? Oh no, like this. More holes lined up like this. So I'm guessing this is the correct way. Uh, what's the instructions say? The instructions say, yeah, it sweeps back. My mistake. And then these have the attachment point, so I can attach these, uh, this, these ones, see? But I think it hooks onto the bottom like this. This will attach down here. I can choose to have it closer or farther, so I can... Can I? Or maybe not. No, no, I only can have it this distance. I can mount that, and then I can mount this on top. Okay, let's cut out this. 
It has two screw it has two springs, a strong spring and a mild spring. Which is the top? This is the top. With the screw hole single to the back. So it sits like this. So does this even have any compatible holes? It absolutely does. But it doesn't leave any room for dampers. I should have realized that uh, I'd have no room for dampers using this. Maybe I shouldn't use this. Maybe I should save this for a different build. Because I can't use the dampers on it anyways. And if we attach this one, there's only two holes that line up. Instead of four, though. So this only gives us four holes, or two holes, for the hookup. This gives us four, but it also sticks out a lot wider. And that could interfere with any of our rollers we want to install. Actually, I think we might have to use this one. if we stick a roller super close it might not interfere with it and then a higher roller up top okay maybe we'll use this we'll save this FRP plate for the future I think well this doesn't include that uh, installation of a brake though We have loom spacers. So we can get some good height on that. We might not need... And this is for this one. Which I'm thinking of putting on the front. Or we could just put... The smaller ones in front. Maybe like this, these little ones. Oh, we could double stack these ones actually. We could have a double stack up front. Once this is attached, these are 13, so we could double stack these two. Hmm. So many parts here. This is the firm, this is the soft. Maybe we'll use the soft one. It moves a fair bit. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, we do this, do this. I'm gonna leave these 19 cup size. Leave those for now. Oh, when we need, we need to get this bumper out because it turns out we are gonna use it. I have decided as such. I don't know what that does. <laughs> and we might use those 13 millimeter. Now 
Now, do you, do we want washers when we install the rear bumper? This is why we don't get rid of the instructions. It shows no use of washers. Just when installing rollers, it says washers. Man, I totally should have restarted the router before the stream. <laughs> we have not but 7% drop frames. Let us remove the battery cat cover. I also ordered a whole pile of screws and shit. So I really have some options when it comes to mounting things. Oh, I just still have a ways to go. I guess it'll get snug. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Let's install this. Which set of screws? This is the set of screws that came with the sliding damper. Because this has multiple or multiples, and this only has one for the one this comes with. But I do believe all these screws are the same scale. So I'm going to have extra parts when I'm done. Does it want 2.5 millimeter or two to five straight in? We can't do the, it has to be here. See, if we we're doing the uh, FRP plate, we'd have to have washers and come up from the bottom and stuff like that. This is gonna be pretty high, actually. Which is fine. Maybe we'll open up this grease tube. I don't particularly want to use Pen for this big area. In installation of FRP plate, you want to screw it down, but also have screws that go through. We could install the, so the motor's at the back, so we could install dampers at the front. In fact, maybe because if we don't use these dampers, we could use these dampers instead. Which I think I can install at an angle. vertical. Mm. Maybe not. 
out. Just for go dampers for now. I wonder if I can install the rear plate on the back. On the front, I mean. It shouldn't slide around. Okay. Does it say in the instructions what each hole is for? the 19s out here and they're putting the 13s here so I should do the same thing and put them there because that's my assumption here, that they're, they know what they're doing so we have a few options for spacer we have this type of spacer and then we have so maybe we'll use these. Uh, we have these hexes. So I could use these hexes with these parts. Assuming the 19 millimeters roll rotate on that. And then I can just mount them up high and then one underneath immediately using one of these brass ones. It gives me access to these aluminum spacers, which I could use in the front. With the... these ones. Because I'll be using two of these instead should free up two of these for the front and I have two for the bottom so that would be front and bottom and then these ones and these spacers for the front Let's open this up and see what's inside. Hello, cat. My cat is here. He's come to say hello. All right, so these should fit here. They do. Then you put a washer in there. And it still rotates. Perfect. Perfect. I'm not sure what I'm doing. All right, so those are compatible with that. 
These are taller though. But I can't put a roller on the bottom because the bumper's in the way anyways. The motor's in the back. Mass damper's up front. Does this line up the hole? I don't think it does. I know this one does. Bum, 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 bum. So if this goes through. These are longer than the other mass dampers. I might try something. So I can take these mass dampers and use them in a different car because I was always iffy about these mass dampers. These screws are longer. Okay, let's. Let's pop out these short blocks. Okay, we're gonna use these. These are for sides, but we're gonna use them for the front. All these little wrenches say tabby on them. It's so cool. Little piles of screws everywhere. Ah, don't fall. All right, cool. So these are different lengths. Now, is that length enough to get through wanted to. So if we line them up, it's about 5.2 millimeters. And the thickness of the chassis here is more than 5.2 millimeters. It's actually from that screw hole, which I want to use It is almost nine millimeters. But that is fine, actually, because there's there's enough gap in here for screw heads anyways. See the gap in there? So we're gonna take these long ones. Pair them with these mass dampers. There's two lock nuts in here. There's four lock nuts in here. But we have these caps. two of these caps. So these should line up. They do. All right, so let's pull off this front bumper again.
And let's install the screws. Do we need washers? It's funny, it wants no use of any washers. I guess it just depends on how and where you're installing it, on what you're using. So maybe we'll take two of these lock nuts and put them over here. And we'll use these two rubber things. which we have. Just throw in lock washers. Stick the nuts on over top. Can we stick the nuts inside the nut driver? <laughs> oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Okay, I need that, I need that. I get scared I dropped some parts. Okay, that's the wrong side of the nut driver. Okay, good. It's not magnetic. I was hoping it was magnetic. <laughs> These are very tiny nuts. <laughs> tiny nuts. This would be easier if I didn't have all of these on already. I'm learning valuable lessons today. Nice. So we'll get that down there. And we'll get this one down there. Look at this customization. Imagine if we were trying to build the purple car today with all those upgrades I'm doing. It would take hours. I mean, this is taking hours, but it would take more hours. So that leaves two lock nut washers, or two lock nuts, one extra bolt, one extra lock washer. Come on, pick up, please. It vanished. If it was found, almost falling on the floor. I would have been very sad. How many times have I dropped this nut? Get on there. Okay, cool. We did it. We haven't even decided if we're going to put the brake on yet. I might put the brake on. It's undecided. Okay, now we just gotta roll these all the way down. Get our nut driver. 
make a nice finger tight. Okay, so they should travel smooth. Oh, they do travel smoothly. Perfect. Oh, wow, this, like, I'm slipping on this thing. So I think that's plenty tight. I don't think I need the screwdriver in the bottom. We're going to anyways, though. Oh, no, that's rock solid. Okay, so that's not going anywhere. So now we stick the mass snappers on there. Man, trying to use that tiny little wrench. Man, if I had to use these tiny wrenches, I'd be so sad right now. They're adorable, don't get me wrong. These are adorable little Tamiya wrenches. But I have no desire to use them. I do have a desire to use this rubber though. This is cool. It's a chunk of rubber that you can just use to screw on. I'm gonna screw that on till it's nice and level with the nut. There we go. And that, my friends, This isn't crooked. Our installed mass dampers. Look at it not bounce. <laughs> so now we can reinstall this to the front of the chassis. This car is looking uh, more intense than I was expecting when I first started construction on it. I thought it would look pretty stock, just with a little extra on it, but it does not. It is a fancy, fancy cat car. No motor upgrade though. All right, so. Would you look at that? It has, it looks like it has a bit of bounce in the back, but all the weight's in the back from the motor. So that kind of keeps it balanced. It's not bad. Now I kind of just want to install the brake because then it's like a full blown, full blown car here, ready to go and everything. Is that the hard spring? Oh, that's the hard spring. All right, mass dampers. How are we going to get these installed?
So I don't actually need this long. I need... Because I'm using these hexes. Because this is going to sit higher. Yes, this is already sitting higher. So we don't need them as high as the front. See, once we have this installed, you can see this sits higher than the front dampers anyways. So it's going to be higher in the back regardless. So these aluminum spacers are going to go over here. So all we need to get through here is a screw that will go through this and into the bottom of the hex nut. This is too long. These shorter screws though. Yeah. Because then there's this. And then the 19 millimeter. Then a washer. And I'm pretty sure the instructions for the sliding mass damper shows the 19 millimeter holes, didn't it? Yeah, we're right here. So 19 is the farthest bottom one. And all right, here it is. If memory serves. These are 19 millimeter rollers. Yeah. It's really close to like exactly 19. Like when you push down on it, it's not, but it's close. It is pretty darn close. So this installs in there. I wanna make sure I have another screw this length. I think it's this guy here. Yes. All right, so this goes here. Guide roller, washer. 19 millimeter hole. Oh, and there's just a little bit left. Screw onto that. It looks like it's gonna hit this though. Where's our box? It looks like it's gonna hit the edge of the roller. What happens if we put it one more out? Problem is the next one out is a lot more. Okay, that definitely covers the whole length. But I think that's too wide. I think it's too wide now. It's not gonna fit inside the, oops, I didn't put a roller on there. Come on. I think it's too wide now. There doesn't seem to be any measurements. I think it's too, yeah, it's too wide. See, this is why you follow the directions. They don't lie to you, they, they, they want you to succeed. They're like, midweek, please follow the directions. And I'm like, no, I reject you. And then it's like, okay, I guess, yeah, once you're it looks like it's the exact same thickness, I'm not gonna lie. Maybe if these rollers were exactly 19 millimeters, it would fit. So this should fit nicely in the box now. It does. Oh, I guess it doesn't impact the side. I 
guess it is right. What do you know? I was wrong the whole time. That's nice and tight. Same up here. Ah! Nice and tight. Look at that. And these should slide freely above. Look at that, look at that clearance. There's not a lot, but there's enough, see? That's the bottom rollers. And then the top rollers are just gonna be these. Right on top. So it's a roller. It is a washer. And then this. Look at that. I like how we were working on the front and then we totally got distracted and started working on the back. That is fine because we're about to finish the back. So how does this go together, sliding mass damper? Or no, no, sliding bumper. There it is. So. Eight millimeter screws, which I hope I didn't use on this. These eight millimeter screws? These are nine, so yeah, that's eight. Because the heads are not included. And washers, so you need washers. Apply grease, apply grease. And then another two by eight, which is this one, with just how much stiffness there is beyond the spring. So the spring adjusts it, but also So I think we'll just apply. The problem with this grease is once I open it, it's 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 go time. I, I, oh no, I can put the cap on. Okay, yeah, 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 that's cool. I was expecting more grease. It's all gooey. So we'll put this down.
basically use up all the grease in this. Lube your springs, everybody. Where's my tweezers? If I use my tweezers, I should be able to pinch it. And get it installed. There we go. Oh man, that's so cool. You don't need nuts or anything at the bottom? No, you just need the washers. anything but should hold together if I get this together ba -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. I love how this is like a literally a custom tuned car it's not just the cat racer, it's my cat racer. Well, that's a lot of resistance anyways. Look at that, sliding damper. Done with this grease. Toss that. Oh, it just hits. Oh, bounce on the back end. Though. When it does bounce, it seems to bounce on the back end more than anything else. But yeah, there's no room for mass dampers back there. Look at that. That's so cool. Look at this. All right, let's get this stack on the front. So I'm thinking about using these 13 mils that it came with, the white ones. Do these fit in here? Oh, they're just caps. All right, so what screws do we want to use? The long ones. So we need this. Oh, it's gotta go through the FRP plate. So this will be 13 millimeter. There's no room for a roller down here. So we're going to go straight through. And then this. And then a washer. this spacer it comes with it's too tall those spacers are too much oh but we have shorter spacers shorter spacer another washer uh no no other washer we're gonna put this one like this and then a washer Well, that's like almost too short with that too. Do you have a longer screw? Okay. Oh, these are all the same length. We have smaller spacers. Let's look at the brake set. What's in the brake set? Do we have a middle size? 
we do not. We have more of these doubles. No, it is a different size. It is a different size. Interesting. Oh, we might have longer screws in here too. We do not, we have shorter screws. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. But we do have two of these left. Mm, no, we can't do anything with that. We have these tiny, tiny spacers we could use. So maybe the tiny, tiny spacers? This. Brass. Because then we can put a lock nut on there to hold it down. Washer. Or a lock washer. Lots of washers available. And then the tiny spacer. And then another one of these. This is a pie. So that should keep it from rolling out on the turns. Especially right now, it's got it has a weak motor in it. And then we can stick a lock washer. And then a nut. And then a cap. And then we can stick a nut on there. Lock it down, and then we can stick one of these caps up top. Because we can't see the caps there because of how I built that back there. That would give us a double stack. If I had longer screws, which I will eventually, I've ordered a bunch of screws. I can modify this, but. We can't right now, so let's just carry on with the fact that we can't and build with what we have. All right, time for more clipping. So we're gonna clip this off. I'm gonna clip these off. And then we will decide if we wanna do the break. Because that will literally be all that's left is the brake decision. Ba -da -ba -da. Still don't know what that's for. Sanity check, make sure these are 13 mil like I think they are. Yeah, these are 13. What's the maximum width? 105 millimeters. Or 150. No, 105. I, I got 105. I got you, fam. We'll do 104.88. Bounces back and forth. What are we looking at exactly? I missed. I missed. 
I shot and I missed. We're looking at 102 from the 105 maximum. So 102 maximum and we're at 105 and it slides. Oh, I love that sliding action. Yeah, it is rolling. It's not scratching. It's rolling. That's good stuff. All right. Let's build these front parts one at a time. Thank you very much. So brass. I'm gonna put that on there. Actually, we need to have this the other way around. So it clears that screw head holding the plate down. And then a washer. And then a tiny spacer. Where's the other tiny spacer? Oh, it's sitting on top of a washer, so I can't see it. And then another one. I'll have this one facing the same direction. And then another washer. Then a lock washer. forward a bit and then a nut we could also put another screw or two through the plate to secure it down even better it's the wrong side on the side that should keep it out and then we got two different heights pretty high in the back not so high in the front but still there it's also got a really strong lean forward I have those chips I could bring that back by getting those chips out eh should I do that I have no way of measuring degrees so I don't know what kind of de what degree incline that is. But we'll leave it as it is for now. Let's get the other side on. And then we'll do the break. this we have no we don't we have brass roller washer spacer I'd like to use this middle spacer I think if I increase the length of the screws it would just be to install that middle spacer Just to get just a hair more gap. I wonder how big that gap is. We're going to measure that gap. I'm curious to know how big it is right now. Oh, 
Once again, imagine using the little wrench to do this. That would be miserable. Okay. Let's make sure we're within regulation standard. We're width. Can't see the number if I hold it like that. 104. Oh, that's close. It's 105 maximum. So that is right on the edge when it comes to width. You can't go any wider than that. I wonder how that fits in the box. Oh, it is close. It is like a super close. What's the bottom one? We're gonna we're gonna lock it. It's mm, pretty tight. One oh four point one seven. That is that is right in spec here. <laughs> Clearance though, we have no problem. We're more than a millimeter everywhere. Real smooth on the side, that's good. Okay, that's our caliper way. And let's shut it off. Let is get these nice and tight. Also, we need a longer screw if we're going to put chips in anyways. Get those lock washers, the lock washer in. Okay, it's still spin freely. Nice and tight. Still spin freely. Now, where's my chunk of rubber? I think you use it for this too. I think I cut the side off one of these. Oh, it rolls on its back too. We're gonna bring this all the way to the back. Right to the nut. I wasn't careful when I cut that one out, I think. It's fine. Damn it! Darn! Darn! Darn it! Darn it! Darn! <laughs> Oh man, it rolled. It, it gets get up and go, got up and went. Oh, oh. I found it. It was absolutely far away. <laughs> I'm drifting. I'm drifting. I'll get there someday. There I am. Hi. All right. Uh, I really hope I did most of this construction on this camera. I think I did. There we go. That hold, helps hold the nuts on. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. Sliding in the back. Rolling in the front, mass damper. It is a car. It is, it is very much 
My cat is meowing at me. It's very much a car. So the question is, do we install the brake? The brake would be nice. As it would allow... But it... it it not fly off the track. But it only has a stock motor in it now anyways. I could always install the brake later. Hmm. Low friction sponge for mild brake effect. Do we have anything that's like a millimeter thick? Making sure our clearance is good. This is this is two millimeters. This is about a millimeter. Mm, my tweezers are about a millimeter. See, the problem with the brake is when you you want the brake real close to the ground. Also, I need to find some way to store all my stuff. I gotta store my washers, my brass parts, my lock washers, my bolts. Oh, these are longer bolts. I could have used these. Aren't these longer? These are longer. But I kinda wanna save these. for mass dampening purposes. In another car, so it's like, I don't want to use them. <laughs> it's fine, that's plenty of roller height anyways. We got starts lower and ends higher than the bottom roller here. I mean, it wants to fall this way. So it should be fine. smoothly whether it's extended or not yeah it's fine but yeah we need to put away we need spacers brass parts washers bolts nuts I need to find a way to store all these things separately that's the thing I get to do off stream Looks like no Pokemon today, probably. Because I have to make food and do chores. But that's fine. I've streamed a lot of Pokemon. It's time for a Pokemon break. <laughs> Does this make me that much more eager to play it when I come back to it? Oh, I ripped it. I didn't want to rip it. Take a look at this at least. I, I know we won't be installing the sponge right now. Because... We don't have a track to race on right now, so the sponge is relevant. Because I don't know what thickness of sponge I need and stuff like that. Minimum ground clearance one millimeter, see? Oh, but I should have a one, one of these sponges to be one millimeter. So I could use this to verify car thickness. This is the one millimeter sponge and it should be thicker than a millimeter actually. This is 115, it's nice and tight. This is a millimeter 15. That is wonderful news. That means we can use this to verify clearance. So it's 25 millimeter screw, 20 millimeter screw, six millimeter spacer, 1.5 millimeter spacer. 
spacers that are narrower. So I could add a 1.5 millimeter spacer up here. Should I? Caution. See, it doesn't give you direct instructions on how to get it the right height because who knows what the right height is. So those screw holes are already taken. So we can put it in these. Although I'm starting to wish I installed this earlier. We need a little more than that. We have a screw that's shorter than this, but longer. Oh, I think there are longer screws in here. Oh, there were longer. There are longer screws in here, after all. And screws the same length and screws that are a hair shorter. There are screws that are longer. Long enough to make me rebuild the front. <sighs> maybe, maybe, possibly. <laughs> what holes am I using? Those. Is this the right size breaking? Oh, that's going to be close. That might cross the line. Let's do a shorter screw. This is a lot of extra length on it we don't need. Ah, whatever. Yeah, it'll make sure we could stick like a nut on the other side to help secure it or something. That is just straight up way, way, way too tall. in there. Let's open her up. Mm, look at these taller screws. Oh, look how much taller they are. Maybe I'll get a wider spacer in there. Ooh! 
Oh, I kind of want to do it. So these are a different length of screw, right? These are. These are longer than this? They are. I think what we want for spacers. Is this screw and then this short spacer and then this shorter one here like that I think that is the distance we need like that I think that's it ah, ah, ah. let's just Drop it, lose all the parts. That's another reason to hold your hands over the table in order to make sure you are successfully not dropping things. The problem is we need more than just a millimeter from the bottom because we also need room for the sponges, right? Oh, that looks, that's still too long. But I think if we remove remove this spacer, So we'd have to have, so it'll be off the ground. No, I think this is, this is, this is it. So we don't need this screw. We can do a shorter screw. This screw. Like this. clear it clears it and then once you have the sponge on there if I stick like the thicker three millimeter sponge on there I can still measure it so yeah this is what I want because we need at least the two millimeter sponge to clear the screw head So, maybe we will put the sponge on. Or at least measure it. Okay, this is the two millimeter sponge. So if that goes on here, like this, that is higher than the screw head. And if we stack the one millimeter sponge and the two millimeter sponge, It catches on the screw head, but it, it's fine. It's fine over here. Everything else is fine. I think. I don't have scissors to cut this. But I'm happy with this. Another screw. Another spacer. And now if we stick in a, uh, a faster motor, it can still, it'll still be able to brake for hitting the uh, jumps and the inclines and it won't go flying off as far. Echo. 
Get in there. Okay, good. See, when it said break set, when I bought this, I thought it meant set of sponges, which it is. Not an actual, like, car break. But it's that too. That's pretty solid. It's not going anywhere. Clearance is good. It clears with two in the th th the one in the two clear. Let's grab the three millimeter sponge. So the one in one millimeter and three millimeter sponge. Do not clear. Okay. So if we apply the two millimeter sponge, we should still have the ground clearance of one whole millimeter and it should break. Yeah, just a little tip up the front and it's already impacting the ground. So we should have some good breaking effect there. Definitely have to have the two millimeter sponge of those those screw heads are covered. And I'll put a dab of sponge on the edges there too. Look at that. So now that we have longer screws. <laughs> let's see how much longer we have. Are these as long as the mass damper screws? Yeah, they are. Look how much longer they are. If we can get the middle spacer. Size spacers in there. That would be huge. We also have some narrow spacers we could use. I would like this gap to be bigger. I mean, yeah, I had the crazy dream to use the big spacers. Where's the other one? There's the other one. But I don't think we need the big spacers. I think that's too much. So I don't want to do that. I do not want to do that anymore. Okay, I want to keep my stuff separate here. sizably longer. I think these are going to get those doubles. I think we're going to get that W. So it's this. 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 Washer. The next size up. Oh man. This, this, we can go even farther. We can go even further behind, beyond. This, washer. Lock. Oh, man.
Okay, that one is... That one ran off. Uh... Does this come with lock washers? It doesn't. So we lost the nut. But I have lots of nuts up here, so... We'll carry on without that guy. Oh, baby. Look at that. Oh man, that's so satisfying. That's so perfect. That's so wonderful. Maybe we take out the chipset now, because now that it's so tall, you can see, you can really see the angle it has. Line up the car. Spacers, rollers, FRP plates. I also have these carbon fiber pieces. I've shown this before though. Different weights. Screwdriver sets. So you have all these extra screw sets too. Some come with spacers. Rollers. Where's the, where are the, where are the chips? The chips land where they land. I'm literally finding every single here they are. Chip angle adjusters. Two degree and three degree. more thickness we'll lose the ability to attach the blue thing on top though or we could cut out that extra piece so if we install it we can't install the blue thing anymore which I want so maybe we'll wait on the chips because the angle down keeps it in the track. So it's not bad that it angles down. So let's leave it as it is for now. We've investigated and we found it. We've been left wanting. Screw them tight. They rotate freely. They do not rotate freely. Why does the top one not rotate? bottom one rotates fine. Why is the top one not rotating? Then it falls out anyways.
because it rotates fine over there. I lost the lock washer. This top one is just rock solid. It no longer rotates freely. <sighs> and all we did was make it separate by more. Because we have a washer and lock washer set up over here and it's fine. Rotate it around. Ba, 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 ba. did it. Okay, it rotates freely now. That is how you launch parts across the table. Lose them. Nice and tight. Spins, spins. Okay, they both spin now. Okay, let's put the cap on it and see how it looks. Look at that. Look how lovely that is. Nice and high. If we installed 19s, we'd have to come out here. Interesting. Okay, here we go. Let's do it with the other side. Does this mess make anyone unhappy? All my stuff everywhere, all my parts. I wonder if I should sacrifice one of my Lego dot containers. For the express purpose of... Screw. Brass. Washer. 
spacer, spacer, brass. This face down now. Washer. Lock washer. Whoa, you see that bank shot off the hand? Nut. Rotate it on. Nice and tight. Okay, they still rotate. Nice and tight. Still rotate. Good, good, good. Blue cap on. Rotate tail piece at the back. There we go. Look at that. We got a brake. We got a sliding rear damp band damper. Double height rollers. What's here? Oh, what's that? There's a max height too. What is the max height? I don't think we're at it, but we should check. 70 millimeters maximum height. Sixty-nine ninety-three. Look at the gap. Like a mile. And I'm assuming the body. It's not much higher than the body. So the body doesn't make us that much higher. And we're still way in there. So there's definitely no issues with height. And width, we're at the very maximum, especially at the front. And length is 170. And I can't get to 170. I have a maximum of 154 is my maximum length. And we are just about in that maximum length. I can almost get us around. So we're probably 160. And the maximum is, oh, 165 is the maximum. And I can get us to probably, what's well, nice, less than a millimeter. Maybe 165 or 154 or one, 158 is my guess of how long this thing is. That's my guess. Either way. It does fit in here. So, yeah, that's half the battle. Not an official measurement, but it is close. So look at that. I think... Because we can't install the... I don't want to install the brakes because I can't test it. I think we should install the batteries. And run it again. Although, having all these parts, I probably shouldn't do it when I have all these loose parts. Let's put all of these loose parts inside this box. Yes, we're mixing them up, but that is fine. This is technically a tool. That piece of rubber. Spacers. These are actually technically spare rollers. Ba -ba 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 -da -da -da. Oh. No, 
do I have to go this way? I didn't bring my scale. So we can't weigh it. But there's a min there's a minimum weight, not a maximum weight. That's because if you're too heavy, you're just gonna go slow, so you actually don't want to be heavy. There it is. The cat racer. Upgraded. Super 2 chassis. Side rollers. Sliding rear damper. Let's turn her on. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa, it takes off like at 100 miles an hour, straight at me. Wow, that's cool stuff. That's cool stuff. Getting at the uh, the back opening is kind of a pain. There it is, the Cat Racer. FRP plate, sliding rear damper, 13 millimeter, 19 millimeter. Mass dampers at the front, where it's really light. See, where it's heavier, it's gonna wanna stay down anyways, but where it's lighter. So there's not really any bounce. But, okay, there's way less bounce on the front. <laughs> Pretty stable though. You toss it when moving forward, it does go straight. Cool beans. I'm gonna call this cat racer done. That's it. I'll probably take some photos, post them on Twitter. Uh, do I want to unhook this camera I'm using right here to take these photos? I probably should because it'll look really good. We'll see. I guess it wouldn't be that hard. You might do that because I could still use the same light. So yeah, that's it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it a stream. I have to clean up. I have to do chores. I have to make food. I got stuff to do. So probably no Pokemon. Uh, I wanted to stick the car in its storage box, but it's full of nuts and bolts right now. Aha. Look at all these extra parts. Now, we did open three upgrade kits. The general tune-up kit. Oh, we have an FRP plate that's extra too. So we opened up the sliding damper set. The tune-up part set, basic tune-up part set, sliding damper set, and the mass damper set. Oh, this is this way, so if you have him, so if you have your boxes standing up like this, 
you can see them. And then this is, this is if you have them on their side. And this is if you have them standing vertically, like this. I plan on doing it lengthwise, so we'll slide this on. Actually, if it's a maximum of 70 millimeters, I don't think the box is 70 millimeters. Because the top of that cat racer is almost touching the plastic. So I don't even think the box, with all the extra space that the box takes up, is 70 millimeters. scratch my box. The box is 54 millimeters external dimensions tall. So that means any car you put in here and you want to use the plastic top has to be less than 53 millimeters probably. No, more like less than 52 millimeters. But there it is. Tamiya Mini Four Wheel Drive. Sorry about the fact that it's in two parts. Uh, I would have liked to be in one, but my internet popped out, so. Everyone who watched, thanks for watching, and I wish you all a fond farewell. Goodbye!